Hi, welcome back, I'm Melissa Muir. Today we're going to talk a little bit about hammer hand pieces. There are two options available. You have a micro motor and you have a hand piece for the flex shafts. Let's jump right in and take a look at the differences and how they are used. There are a couple different offerings of hammer hand pieces from Fordham. One is a brush type micro motor for the micro motor systems and the other is a hammer hand piece for a flex shaft. Now the flex shaft one comes in two varieties one without a duplex spring and one with a duplex spring. Now when you use the duplex spring option, it is nice because it pulls some of the pressure of the flex shaft off of you. However, if you take this and operate this at more than a 30 degree bend, you are at risk of breaking this. Now on the hammer hand piece that comes with the duplex spring, it is part of this. If that spring breaks, you are going to have to repair it and that can be quite costly. However, you can buy an adapter and use that with just a regular hammer hand piece. This would be a far less expensive option, especially if you tend to work a little tighter than that 30 degree bend. Now with these, there are some maintenance that will be necessary, especially for those with the duplex spring. You can get these little oilers again through Fordham and they're wonderful. They have a hypodermic needle here on the end and every couple of hours of runtime, probably up to about 10, you are going to want to just take and put a drop of oil, just one, right there into that hole. Now that's for the duplex spring model, but both hammer hand pieces need to have just one drop of oil applied again about every 10 hours of usage. If you're using these quite a bit, I would probably do this once a week. Oiling your brush type handpiece is not necessary. However, as you work with this, you will need to eventually clean out the machine. So you'll want to undo here at the bottom of this and you'll want to kind of brush out the fan area and occasionally you're also going to need to change the brushes just like you do with your regular flex shaft motors. Now both hammer hand pieces are going to allow you to use the anvil points and it's the same anvil points for either one and these are meant to be altered. When you get them they are blanks and they are meant to be altered so be sure to check out some of the videos that I have showing how to do that. To install one, you're going to pick out your selected item and simply screw this into place. If you need to tighten it, there is a pin here that will allow you to have a little bit of leverage to make that a bit tighter. Now I can make my stroke stronger or lighter just depending on what I want. And I do that simply by tightening or loosening this knob here on our handpiece. The brush type micromotor features a coiled cord, very, very lightweight, so you don't have to worry about having that hinder you in any way. Now the micromotor will go from zero to 2,500 strokes per minute, so you can go quite quickly. And the hammer hand piece will go up to 5,000 RPM. Now the hammer hand piece for your flex shaft should never be used over 5,000 RPM. If you have an SR motor, it goes from 500 to 18,000 RPM. And you'll need a control box to help bring that down so that you don't go over the 5,000. Now, if you work with an LX motor, it works beautifully with the hammer hand piece and it's higher torque, which will give you a stronger stroke. So let's see how these work. Both of these have a pave point tip in them. Now the hammer hand piece for the flex shaft will actuate as soon as you press your pedal. However, the micromotor hammer hand piece does not actuate until you give it some pressure. So I can place this on my metal and nothing happens until I actually push down. In this case, I have some settings where I've got four prongs and a six millimeter stone. I'm going to use the hand piece to just gently push on each of those prongs. Because this does not actuate until I give it some pressure, I want to make certain that my piece is secured. In this case, I've used some thermal lock to do this. And what I'm going to do is just methodically work around each prong and gently push to give a little bit of pressure. Now I only go a little bit at a time on each one, turn it around and repeat on the next. 
As you can see, it's pretty simple and doesn't take a whole lot. One of the things I like to use my hammer hand piece for is to texture up metal. In this case, I have a back plate that I'm going to be applying a texture to. I'm using the pave point, which is just a slightly rounded hammer point on this. I really like the texture that it gives me. It's a hammered texture basically, but it's nice and subtle. So when I do this, I like to have it, like I said, on a nice hard steel surface, in this case my bench block, and I'm just going to kind of work my way around my piece. I like to work in circles. So I don't want to go too fast, I don't want to go too slow, but you know, just get a nice little rhythm going. So you can start doing this before you get going. That's one of the things I like about the hand piece, working with a flex shaft, is that it will actuate as soon as you push your foot pedal down. And then I can just use this and work my way around the piece. This particular point I have altered and you can kind of see that. So there is a curved radius this way as well as this way. And then I've taken it to about a 600 grit uh, finish on this. I don't want it to necessarily be a high polish, but I also do want it still to be a nice polish. The reason I don't want to go super high polish is I don't want to slip. I want to have a little bit of friction to kind of help hold me into place. Now what I like to do is give a little bit of a pressure here. And you can see that actuates my my point and then I can just kind of feather it in up against my bezel. So just very gently and I'm holding my stone into place and I don't want to hit the stone only just the edge of the bezel and I'm going to rotate that around. I'm going to do the same thing over here and now I'm going to do the top and the bottom. So again I rotate and around to the other side. Okay, and now it is set. We have a beautifully rounded bezel all the way around my stone. At this point, I would take my burnisher just like I normally would if I'm hand setting it or however else and just burnish that setting and we're set and now ready to go. On this piece, I have two rivets that I've put into place. I'm going to use the altar head to just gently go around the rim of this rivet to push it over and flare it out. Now this has been pre-flared, so really all I'm doing is kind of burnishing out those edges. And it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure, but it rolls the edges quite nicely, as you can see here. Very, very simple, and once again, the hammer hand piece does not actuate until I give it some pressure. This is handy because that means that I can get it right where I need it to be before I allow the pressure to begin and start laying this down. Hopefully you understand these hand pieces just a little bit better now and it will also help you to make a more informed decision. As always, if you have questions, let us know down in the comments or shoot us a line. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next time. <music>